everybody. Friday morning. I have arrived at my customer here in Royal Oak, Michigan, which is a bit north of Detroit. Basically a suburb of Detroit. And I got here a bit early. My appointment's at 6. It's currently 549. And I had to go into the building there and find somebody that could move this truck you see in front of me. He was parked here where I couldn't make this turn. Because they have, let me show you, they have all sorts of uh, bins with metal parts right here. So see, I couldn't make this turn to get through. Had to come in from that way off the street, 14 mile road. But anyway, while I was waiting on this fellow to move the truck, I got out and moved, or took my uh, chains off. So I've got, I've still got three straps on there. While I, all I have to do is go around the building here. There's a little street back here. And uh, you basically have to do a 90 degree back into the door. It's pretty tight. This was one of the first places I came to with my trainer. And uh, it was a good practice spot to back. Because as you'll see, there's not enough room for your truck to rotate as you make the backup. Especially if there's another truck in there. It's like a double door as I remember. Or, or one door with a, two spaces. But since I'm the first appointment, I'm hoping there won't be anybody else in there. All right, I got a stop sign here. But see this road basically uh, is here for this company over on the right to get into. Oh. Well, I do see another truck parked up here. So somebody figured out how to get in here and park overnight. Or got unloaded late and stayed here. see I think these are the doors right here to my left where I have to back into so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull over here when these vehicles pass by and then go inside make sure that's where they want me pretty sure it is Alright, so um, and then when you leave here you just go out straight ahead and make a left on that road up there. Ah, see they don't even have the they don't even have it open here because they don't officially open back here until 6 and it's about 5 minutes till 6. But this is where you have to back into there's two spots. Luckily, there's not another truck in there. It'd be really difficult. So, uh, as soon as they let me in, I'll back into there and uh, start getting unloaded. More later. Okay, guys. Well, I'm still parked back here. Here's the door I showed you earlier. It's about 6.15. My appointment was for 6. I've been here about 45 minutes and nobody's even come back here to see what's going on open the gate so uh, I called in I called the customer number and talked to the guy in the I guess the shipping receiving office and 
he said you know just wait somebody be back here so you know what else can i do but this is one of those instances where you know we've got a, an appointment 6 a.m i'm here i'm ready and uh you know i'm just stuck here doing nothing and i don't get any pay until after two hours pass by you know i talked about that last week but uh you know i'm just saying i'm just letting you know how it goes you know overall you know you gotta look at the big picture on your pay but uh you know if you let this kind of thing get to you you know worried about the the few minutes here that are i'm getting you know i'm not getting paid for it, you know it'll mess you up so you just gotta just gotta wait it out hopefully somebody will show up and we'll get in here should be a pretty quick unload six bundles i do remember you know i mentioned coming here with my trainer when i was in the trainer truck and i remember having to wait right here parked like i am now we were here for i think it was like four hours or more it was it was terrible and uh the guy inside said there was some kind of, they had some kind of strike going on and they were just super short-handed. Hopefully that's not what's happening today. But anyway, you can see the sun's coming up. Like I said, it's about 6.20. I've, uh, I took my middle strap off. So all I have on here still is the two end belly wraps just to keep it secure while I'm you know, I've got to pull up there beside those trucks and then back into the door. So, that's really all I've got left to do. So, uh, all right, just waiting. I'll show you something later. Okay, guys. Finally getting unloaded here. So, uh, getting the first bundle off. And uh, here's a look at the inside of the place. So it's taken them about an hour to get started on this, but we're finally doing it. So we got six bundles total, and that's bundle number one. So he's gonna take it over there and drop it somewhere. There's my friendly unloader. <laughs> that is a 10 ton capacity crane, it says. So, um, I'll have a lot of these one foot blocks left over here. Usually they'll have a, uh, a bin where we can throw these. Let me see if that's what's over here. Uh, well, there's nothing in there, but I bet that's what that's for. I'll ask him when he comes back. So, I just talked to another, that Maverick driver that was parked out front, walked up and uh, was talking to me, his name is Jeremiah, he said he lives in the uh, Fort Worth area, but he didn't want to be on camera, so uh, nice fella though, uh, said he's been driving for Maverick uh, a little over a year, and he's in the USA division, so he stays out at least two weeks at a time. So I was asking, you know, living in Fort Worth where he parks his truck on the weekends, you know, when he's home, and he said he normally parks it at a love, and then if someone comes to pick him up from there. So just to give you an idea, you know, how that works. Lucky for me, you know, I just park at the Maverick North Little Rock yard and park my little car there, and super easy. All right, so uh, that's kind of how it works. Um, if I can, I'll set the camera up next time and just so you can see how we're hooking the, the crane to it. But uh, here's a shot of the place. I'm not really sure what they make here. Probably a lot like that crankshaft place we go to in Georgetown, you know, they make automobile parts of some sort 
axles, drive shafts, something like that. Because I've seen a couple of these guys wearing UAW uh, shirts. All right, more later. Try to set the camera down and show you how we hook up a bundle. the battery on his little remote control thing went out so he's swapping batteries <laughs> so I guess what we're gonna do now maybe is take off this side that would be a smart thing to do to keep the trailer more balanced but we'll see gonna get this one now get these two together. okay so he said we're gonna get these two hmm. This time he wanted to get two bundles together. All right, let's see what happens. Well, he's putting some more blocks on there. I guess that keeps them Keeps them at the right space. Huh? I don't know. Maybe he uses them down at the other end when he's unloading. Alright. Let's see what happens here. Alright. Up we go. He didn't like the way those were balancing, so he's going to move and move the strap a little bit. Move that one back a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right, let's roll, man. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, so that leaves us with three bundles. There we go. All right. 
right, so that's how it works. See you in Butler. <laughs>